Listen, man, I love Christmas, and I have had some really good Christmases in my day, okay? I mean, my family, we were all into Christmas. We'd watch the movies. We'd, you know, root off the red-nosed reindeer before anybody thought it was too mean. That's what's the problem with our world now. Um, we decorated, you know, went to see Santa. In fact, I remember the day after, the day after Thanksgiving, we knew it was Christmas time uh, because we would, we would pull out the Christmas tree. Some of you put up the Christmas tree. We would just pull it out because we, we love Christmas so much, we never even took it down. We had a fake tree, and we just slid it into what became known as the Christmas closet. And then we just opened the door and just slide that mug out, man, just <laughs> cross the floors. And, and then we put it in the corner, and you, it was real easy to figure out which side went in the corner. It was the part with no, no decorations. Why would you decorate something on the back side of the corner? That just don't make sense. So, and then you'd plug it in and just see what you're working with this year, you know? And about half the lights would turn on, and so when they, the ones that didn't turn on, though, we didn't take them off. We just added more. That mug weighed about 800 pounds by the time I was in the seventh grade, but whatever. Throw them little tinsels on there. In fact, my family was into Christmas so much, we had family members, and they would keep up their Christmas lights year-round. Yeah, for sure. I remember going to my Uncle Phillips one time, and it was like June. We were going fishing, and on his chain-link fence out in front of his house, the Christmas lights were on. I was like, Daddy, why has Uncle Phillip got on his Christmas lights? You know what he said? Boy, you can't hide money. That's what he said. So <laughs> we were into it, man. And I mean, Santa Claus was good to us. Good to us. Um, I got a car one year. That was cool. I got a motorcycle. I've told you about that one a bunch. Um, but probably one of my favorites, man, one of my tops. I think I was, I think it was first grade or something. Wake up early in the morning and come tiptoeing into the living room about quarter to four, something like that. Look around the corner and boom. And I don't know how Santa works at your house. He kind of has different modes depending on whose house is he at. At our house, the, the, the wrapped presents were from people and then the, just, the unwrapped, he would just chunk them down the chimney or however he did it. You know, they were just out. And I turned the corner and there's some stuff. So I go and I wake up my brother and get everybody up and we come to the, come to the bottom of the tree and now we're starting to open presents. And there's this one little box and it literally is like shaking and moving. And I begin to think, oh my goodness, maybe I've gotten a gremlin. If you don't know what a gremlin is, it was this uh, demonic activity in the 80s. And so, uh, <laughs> so finally we get to that box and I pop the top off of it and there's a beagle puppy. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's just looking at me. The box didn't smell that good, but it was so cute. <laughs> and then my brother, he had a little wiggly box too. And so he popped the top off of it and there's another beagle puppy. We had a, we had a male. He got the boy and I got the girl. And daddy said, all right, what do you want to name him? And so I looked at her for a little while and I thought, I got it. I named her Daisy Duke. <laughs> now, if you don't know who Daisy Duke is, um, she was kin to the Duke boys. They were traveling evangelists in the 80s back in the... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my, what really happened, man, I thought if she ever finds out that I got a puppy named after her, she's going to fall madly in love with me and we're going to be together forever. That was my plan, so it didn't work out. So I had Daisy Duke, my brother, he got his dog, he named him the Incredible Hulk. So that's what we had. We had the Incredible Hulk, we had Daisy Duke. And these were hunting dogs. And um, in fact, they didn't even spend that night in our home. Uh, Daddy also got us some two-by-fours and plywood, and we built them dog houses that day. That's what we did Christmas afternoon. And so anyway, they were, they were hunting dogs. And so we go hunting with them, and we hunted rabbits. And I know some of you aren't into this, but get over it. It's not Easter. I wouldn't tell it on Easter. So anyway... <laughs> We hit the woods. At this point, I'm probably, I'm guessing second grade, something like that, maybe third. We're trucking it through the woods, and it's cold, cold, cold. And I'm walking through the woods, and I got a shotgun, like a 410, 20 gauge, I don't know what it is. Which I think, parents, I think you should all get your kids dogs and guns for Christmas. I think it's the moral of the story. <laughs> and so we're walking through the woods, and my dogs are doing their thing, and, 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 and we're doing like, I don't know if you've hunted much, but you just make these noises when you hunt. I don't even know what it means, but you go, here now, get him up, get him Just stuff. I don't know what we're saying. That's my dad just speaking in tongues. I'm not sure what we're doing, but you have to do it. Here now, him now. So we're doing our thing. Dogs are all sniffing around. And we get up to this creek. In my mind, it's like a huge river, but probably, you know how your mind works. And so it's probably six or eight feet wide or something. And Daisy goes walking right out on the ice. It's frozen. But again, this isn't like, this isn't like Minnesota where you can drive on the stuff. You understand? This is South Carolina. 
It's just kind of barely frozen. She comes walking out, and then immediately my dad goes, get on out of here. Which, let me translate. <laughs> Essentially what he's saying is, Daisy, that is dangerous, and you should come over here with us. All right? That's what he's saying. So the Incredible Hulk finds a little tree, and he kind of goes to the other side of the little creek over the little fallen down tree. And Daisy looks at my dad, her master, with this look like, huh, yeah, right. I do what I want. I'm in the woods. Seconds later, you hear the ice under her feet go, and then, boom, she's gone. Gone. Now, it's a little creek, so it's got some flow to it, all right? It's got some current to it, so she can't just pop right back out the hole. So she goes under, and then the current gets her, and as she's trying to get up, there's just ice. And I'm standing there, just freaking out. I don't know what to do. And I'm, I'm, I see her Scratching and clawing and scratching and clawing. And folks, that is the condition of every single one of us. Every single one of us. Whether you realize it or not, every single one of us have rejected the law, the loving law of our Heavenly Father who is our master. And we say, forget you, I got this. And when the ice breaks, we ain't got this. You see, every sin is prepackaged with a gotcha. And when it gets you, you get to the point where you go, uh-oh, I need help. Oh, so there I am frozen. On the other side, by the way, the story, can you imagine if I was like, so let's pray. That'd be the worst Christmas ever, wouldn't it? <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> so the Incredible Hulk, he's on the other side of the, of the little creek, and he's just barking. Burr, 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 and he's barking. And I, I, don't, I don't know what he's saying. Hey, 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 hey. I don't know what he's saying. I think it's kind of like, you shouldn't have done that. 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 Which honestly, for many of us, that was our church experience growing up. Like you get to that place in your life where you think, uh-oh, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. And you show up to church and you just hear somebody like me stand up in front of you and go, well, you shouldn't have done that. And you shouldn't have done that. And you shouldn't have done that. And you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but what, what now? You shouldn't have done that. Yeah, that's not the gospel. The gospel is not God's good, you're bad, try harder, see you next week. That's not. So that's, that's not very helpful to just yell at somebody, you shouldn't have done that. And, but, but I wasn't very helpful either. I was on the other side of the creek, and I had this great affection for my dog. I wanted her to get help. I didn't know what to do. And so I just stood there frozen. And by the way, that's kind of like a lot of churches today, really. People have great affection towards other people, but it takes a lot of love to look at somebody in the face and say, you are not a mistaker that just needs to do better. You're a sinner that needs a savior. In fact, church, if somebody invited you to be here today, the underlying message is, I really love you. Now, I know if you're golfing buddies, that's kind of awkward for you right now because you look over and Ted's like, you dang right, love you. All right, so I'll say it for him. So the yelling at her didn't do any good, and just the hoping for her didn't do any good. But, thank God, my dad was standing, I don't know, 10 or 20 yards down the creek, downstream from us. And when he saw all the commotion and saw what happened, and here comes Daisy Duke just scratching and clawing and scratching and clawing. And here's the thing you got to understand. No matter how hard she tried, she could not break through that thing that was keeping her from air, which equaled life. But my dad with a 12 gauge in his hand, busted through the ice. And when she comes by at just the right time, he reaches his hand down into the freezing cold water, glove, sleeve and all, grabbed her by the back of the neck and pulls her out of what certainly would have been her own demise and death and sits her down right next to him. And then it got even crazier. We are all like, yay. And then it was unbelievable. We get to the truck and daddy takes the blanket and wraps it around her. You see, we had a 71 Chevy, and when it got real cold, some of the pleather would stab you a little bit, so we laid down a quilt to sit on it. Anybody else have those seat covers growing up? Yeah, so that's what he, and so he took that, and he wrapped it around Daisy Duke, and he put her inside the cab of the truck and turned on the heat. Now, I know that's not a big deal for y'all, okay, but when, at my house, for the hunting dog to ride in the cab of the, I leaned over to Russ, I was like, brother, you better get your heart right. Jesus is coming back. That's a sign of the end of times, Okay. <laughs> From that day forward, that became his dog. I mean, she still liked me when I had the treats, but that became 
his dog. Why? Because I'm telling you somehow intuitively, she was dead. She was dead. And by his goodness and grace, he broke through the thing that was killing her and rescued her. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the gospel. That every single one of us, every single one of us, by our own rejection of God, have said, I got this. And then, and then, by the power of the Holy Spirit, sometimes he lets the scales fall off of our eyes and we realize, uh-oh, I ain't got this. No matter how much I scratch and claw and try, I just can't undo this thing that I have done. Even if I was perfect from this day forward and promised I'll never go walk on the ice again, what are you going to do about that past? But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love for us, he busts through sin and death. He pays the price. And for anyone, anyone, anyone who would believe, anyone who would just believe, you know what? When he died on the cross and he said, it is finished, somehow I believe that counted for me. For anyone who would believe, he will break through sin and death and rescue you, redeem you. And then wrap you up and take you home as his very own son or daughter of the Most High King.